All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to say all praises, honor, and glory be to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, real world blessings to the whole for the elect, teaching this word in all sincerity and in truth. You know, and as you can see, I'm just out here in a bit of nature today. You know, and um, I'm just chilling, you know, I'm just, you know, chilling, meditating. You know, I'm just, you know, just taking in my bit of, you know, my good dose of nature for the day. And, um, you know, it's good to do that, you know, to um, introduce balance into your life. Because, um, you know, being in these cities and, you know, especially over here in London, everything's so rush, rush and, um, you know, full of, full of demons. And, um, you know, people just got really vile spirits upon them, man. You know, um, it's vexing to be amongst these people. That's why they speak about, like, Lot was vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, man. You know, so it's good to get that balance in and um, get a dose, get a good dose of green in your life. You know, take it all in. You know what I'm saying? Just separate yourself from the hustle and the bustle because, you know. And I was thinking about you know how this, you know, these cities that have been built up by Esau in these last days. These cities that have been built. You know, we have to always understand that. Um, you know, these cities that have pretty much been built off, you know, they've been built up of the blood of our people, man. You know? And so I've been meditating, and that's why you see Nahum 3 on the screen. Because I was meditating on, you know, blood, and I was meditating on how, you know, the blood of the very soil that I'm standing on. You know, the blood, no, the blood has been soaked into the very soil, you know, that we stand on or we walk upon. On the most highest green earth every day If you will You know especially in these You know these filthy cities that you see That have been built up by Esau um, The scriptures speak about Woe to him that build up a town with blood In fact let's start off with that scripture In Habakkuk the 12th cha um, second chapter And the 12th verse And we're living in a time where Esau is being revealed For the dark dirty deeds he's been doing upon the earth man Alright This is Habakkuk 2 and 12 It says woe to him that build up a town with blood Right and establish if the city by iniquity. So Esau, you you know, woe means destruction. So you gotta pay for the blood, the bloodshed of the saints, man. All right, you gotta pay for the bloodshed of, you know, the so-called Native Americans, you know, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians. You gotta pay for that, and you will pay for it, man. And we're we're just waiting. All right, yeah, we, you know, we're still in oppression. We're still in a, we're still prisoners of war, but we don't take it upon ourselves. We don't advocate. Advocate taking it upon ourselves to You know get our own You know our own vengeance If you will we wait upon the Lord Everything has to be done in order Alright And there is going to come a time when your Shai is going to set this right Man and um You know the, the bloodshed that you shed it can't be cleansed But by the blood of him that shed it alright You've established this city by iniquity So you're going to have to pay with your own blood In due season alright and it's coming man You, you know the, the downfall Of your kingdom is close all right, your kingdom is circled in the drain, man. You're, it's just a matter of time. The scriptures speak about the Lord has appointed the bounds that you can't pass. All right, you've established the city by iniquity, man, and you're gonna have to pay for that. All right, um, let's go back to Nahum chapter three, verse one. It says, "Woe to the bloody city!" All right, and this is a bloody city, man. The slave trade, the transatlantic slave trade. What about the Americas? When they went over to the Americas and they um. He slaughtered Gad, Reuben them, you know, the Native American Indians, you know, they raped the women, they, they slaughtered the men, you know, they slaughtered the children, they tortured, they tortured the Israelites, man, they shed their blood, all right, and then you, and then you tried to hide it, you tried to cover it up, you tried to remove slavery from your textbooks, what about the so-called Negroes, man, shackled and chained, shoved into these tight cramped spaces, spaces on your boats, on your ships, Shipped around the world, sold on auctioning blocks, all of these things that you've done, and you just expect this to be ignored? You just expect to sweep that under the rug and then ain't nothing gonna come from it. No, there is something that's gonna come from it, man. You know? And that's why the scripture says it is full of lies and robbery. The prey the part. If not, we are the prey right now. Right? Esau, that cunning hunter that he is, he's hunting down his prey, even to this day. That's why you still see Jake getting shot down in the streets. That's why you still see Jake, you know. Pretty much being hunted down by the hunter. Alright, Esau pushing out the baby sword with his stabbing jabs. 
in these last days, the decree in these unrighteous decrees. You know? Esau's still laying these traps for our people, man. You want to talk about Juneteenth? You got a bunch of simple ass niggas running around there talking about Juneteenth. It took them to 2021 to finally recognize, you know, uh, 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 the emancipation of slavery. But guess what? It was, you know, they say emancipation, proclamation, all of that. Going back to Abraham Lincoln. Well, guess what, man? What about the 13th Amendment? All right, when you were putting Jake, you were inca incarcerating Israelites, incarcerating Jake for the most littlest crimes, man, the most littlest things. All right, and you were putting them into, you were putting them back into slavery. So even though you said you, you know, the emancipation of the slave trade, and guess what? You were putting Jake in, in prison cells, man, for next to nothing. All right, and still, you know, forcing them to work slave labor. So you didn't really abolish slavery, man. It's just a, you just changed the setting. That's all you've done. And we're still slaves to this day. And that's why the scripture says it's full of lies and robbery. The prey depart if not. Okay. So this is a bloody city, man. Make no mistake about it. It's a bloody city. And Esau's going to have to pay for what he's done. This is Numbers 35 and 33. So you shall not pollute the land wherein you are. All right. And this land is polluted, man. You best believe this land is polluted. This land is this filthy, man. Okay. He's he, Esau's getting <laughs> see some guy just yeah, he's get you see when the word comes out you get these demons they want to start walking around you know, all this green space and they want to start walking around you because they want to hear they want to try and eavesdrop and Esau's on edge man you know Esau's just you know he knows his kingdom's coming to an end and you know the, this is the bitter truth this is the truth and you know that's why the scripture says his children shall seek to please the poor that's why you see Esau they be catching themselves building hospitals building schools and so on and so forth and going over to the land of africa and doing this and doing that all right but guess what that's just that's nothing but his children seeking to please the poor all right you, you, you're talking about reparations we want biblical reparations like the, what the, like the apostles were saying we want biblical reparations man all right fuck your frns fuck your fiat currency which you're devaluing every moment Every day, your fiat currency is being devalued. Why, why do we want something that has no value? Okay? We want you, all right? Just like you stole us. You stole men, women, and children. We want you. We want your men, your women, and your children. That's what we want. Okay? And then we're going to be square. Then we're going to be, you know, we're going to be even, so to, so to speak. It's so, so you shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood it defileth the land. So this land is defiled, man. All right? And when something is defiled, it means it needs to be cleansed. And how is this land going to be cleansed? All right. And the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. And that's the only way you cleanse this land. All right. So your, you know, your blood has to be shed in order for this land to be cleansed. All right. And again, we ain't advocating. We go out there. Hey, the Lord is gonna, the Lord is gonna rise up to the prey in these last days. You best believe that. All right. What it's saying, Zephaniah three. All right, let's, let's deal with the Lord's determination, the Lord's anger. Let's deal with what the Lord's coming back to do. All right, because the scripture says, Woe to you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Okay. Let's read this, Zephaniah 3 and 8. Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. So guess what? You Right now, you're the hunter. You're about to become the prey. When you're gonna, The Lord's going to show you who the real hunter is, man. All right, and when the lion, <laughs> when the lion goes out on a hunt, like the apostles were saying, hey, all the animals scatter. Everyone's afraid. The scriptures speak about the Lord's gonna cry like a travailing woman, man. He's gonna cry and roar. The conquering lion is gonna roar when he comes back. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you, man? This bloody city is about to be cleansed, man, and I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. All right, and these are the things that we gotta be thinking about: revenge, man. The things that we gotta be thinking about. You know, the Lord coming up to rise up to the prey and, and, and pretty much put our enemies under his feet. The scriptures speak about us being able to tread on the necks upon tread upon the necks of our enemies, man. That time is coming, that time is near, man. Alright, it says, because right now we're living in a time of a transfer of power, a transition of rulership upon the earth. Right now the wicked is in, in rulership. Alright. But because of those unrighteous dealings, alright, in fact, let's get that real quick. Let me hold that scripture. Sirach 10 and 4 and 10 and 8. 
It says because of unrighteous dealings, injuries and riches got by deceit. Okay, you got your riches by deceit, man. You're nothing but a thief. All right, and then once you got, you know, all the world's gold and precious jewels and silver into your possession, then what do you do? You, you, you have to hide yourself. And that shows you how much of a, a weak ruler you are, man, over the earth. Because you have to hide. When we get the power on the earth, we ain't going to have to hide, man. You're going to know who's ruling. All right? You're going to have to come up to Jerusalem, you know? I'm talking about these other nations. They're going to have to come up to Jerusalem to learn of our way, to be taught of our ways, man. Like it says in Isaiah, the second chapter. Let's, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. You know? A people before us, a place. You're going to have to be taught. The government of Israel. You're going to have to be taught by, by us to learn of our ways, man. The same way that you have to abide by Esau's rules in his kingdom, you're going to have to abide by our rules in our kingdom, man. And if you don't, <laughs> maybe he don't. <laughs> you know? Who knows? But if you don't, then you're going to get your ass beat, your ass bust. We're going to rule upon over these nations with an iron with an iron rod, man. And we're going to beat you into pieces. Like the scripture says in Revelation 2.25 on down. Okay, so because of unrighteous dealings, injuries and riches. And Esau is going to be in the pits, man. Okay, he ain't going to get his lands back. All right, after a thousand years of slavery, he's going to be gathered into a pit and burnt. Obadiah 1.18. That's what's going to happen to Esau, man. The red devil that's running amok over the face of the whole earth. Rabid dogs that they are, man. Spreading disease, chaos, uneasiness, you know, viruses, all kinds of stuff. Esau is a devil that the Bible speaks of, man. The earth is crying out for new rulership. Everything in existence is crying out for new rulership right now on the earth. Because Esau, he's turned everything upside down. Even the trees are going to rejoice when this man's taken out of power. Imagine that. The trees are catching hell. Yeah, that's right. This tree right here, hey, this tree's catching hell, man. You know? And they just came out and said that um, now trees, you know, when they uh, give out their pollen or whatever, now they're saying that the, the virus can travel on the, on the, off the tree's pollen. So what are you going to do now to the tree? You're going to ch start chopping down all the trees at a greater rate than you already are? That's why the trees are catching hell. You even want to take the trees out. <laughs> Bro, this guy's got a goal, man. It says, and riches got by deceit. The kingdom is translated from one people to another. So the kingdom is about to be translated to one people from one people to another. And to prove that, guess what? Guess who's gonna be ruling after you, man? We are. Alright, this is sec uh second Ezra chapter 6, verse 9. Alright, let me just let this devil go past real quick. You know? <clears throat> yep, that's it, and that's how Satan works, man. That's how Satan works. You, you know, you come out here to a undisclosed area to do a video, and of all the places that man can walk, he wants to walk right through here. I'm pretty much like in a little corner somewhere, man. And I, I kid you not, I'm in like. I'm in the fields. I'm in the. I'm in a great wide open area. Behind, beyond these bushes, there's so much green where everyone can walk. But he chooses to walk right through this pathway right here. Hey, it's okay. All right, with his pink T-shirt on. And <laughs> this is um Esau's through, man. All right, this is Second Ezra six and nine. This is for Esau is the end of the world. Maybe I should have read that out loud when he walked past. Nah, you know. It said, for Esau is the end of the world. And who's Esau? Esau is the wicked that the Bible speaks of. You can find out who the wicked is in Malachi 1 and 4. And Esau is the people who the Lord hates on the earth, man. The scriptures tell you that. Malachi 1 and 4. When you start from verse 3, it says, I love Jacob and I hated Esau. So Esau being the end of the world, who the earth has been given into the hand of the wicked in these last days. Right? He's the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it to follow with. So... Once Esau goes out of power, out of rulership, we're going to be next in, you know, next to rule. And we're going to take his ass out of his power seat through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is going to come and do it first. And we're going to be joint heirs with Yahweh Shai, man. And that's why we've got to endure until the end, until the Lord comes back, you know, to pour upon them his indignation. Let's go back to Zephaniah 3 and 8. 
It says, for my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation. And indignation means righteous anger. All right? So does the Lord hate? Is the Lord angry? Yes. Right? And it's just because Esau is the wicked. He needs to be paid back for the things that he's done. Remember, we spoke about the bloody sea. Okay? The controversy of Zion, man. You done touched the apple of the Lord's eye, man. All right? We're the, we're the Lord's chosen people on the earth. And you put us in the favelas, the ghettos. Okay? Put us in the slums. Have us eating shit diets and... You know, promoting nothing but filth among our people, flooding our communities with drugs, guns, promoting adultery amongst ourselves, amongst our community, lacing our food with pork, all kinds of abominations, you know, advertising it as a delicacy to our people, hiring sellouts of our nation, you know, and putting them up as puppet leaders over our nation, celebrities and that and whatever, and making them follow after these false idols. That's what you've done, man. Because the scripture called Esau the accuser of, of, of thy brethren, man. Who slandereth thine own mother's son. That's what Esau does. Alright? Esau accuses us, accuses us before the Most High. But guess what? He's the one that sets up the situation for us to go off in the first place. Man, ultimately we know that the Heavenly Father controls everything. But Esau is being used and manipulated on the left hand side by the Lord. To do the bidding of the wicked on the earth. And that's why he's going to have to pay. And this is the most highest movie. Don't get angry with us. You take it up with the Lord. That's, that's the setting that you have been created to play on the earth. And in every movie, like, um, like even a computer game, you've got the good guy and the bad guy. You've got to take out the bad guy in the computer game. Let's use a computer game as an example. You've got Super Mario, right? You've got Super Mario, Luigi and them, Princess, and then you've got, and you've got uh, Bowser. Okay? Or Super Sonic. You've got Sonic... And then you got Shadow, you got uh, Dr. Robotnik, and so on and so forth. You know, for all, all you old school gamer heads out there, you know, I used to play a lot of games, you know. Street Fighter, you had you had Ryu, Ken, <laughs> you know, and then you had M. Bison, Sagat, you know. You had you always had opposition. Alright, and the Lord does everything with balance, man. Alright, the scripture says a false, there's a scripture that says a false balance is an abomination to the Lord. Alright, so let's go ahead back in um, Zephaniah 3 and 8. It says, Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations, that I may, may assemble the kingdoms, to pour upon them my indignation, even all my fierce anger. So is the Lord angry? Yes. He's very angry. Alright, the scripture says the day of the Lord burns in his heart. There, oh, there's a scripture that says the, the Lord is angry with the wicked every day. Right? It says, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. So the Lord is coming back with fire, man. And he's about to put down all rule and authority. The authority that's over the earth right now is about to be put down. Esau's authority, his rule on the earth, is about to be put down, man. And all these heathen nations that are imagining a vain thing, thinking they're going to be the next rulers, you know, that's exactly what it is. It is a vain thing. It's futile to imagine you to be the future rulers over the earth. Because there's going to be, there's about to be a new kingdom set up upon the earth that's going to never be destroyed. We're going to be ruling forever. Let's read Daniel 7 and 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. All right? And that's straight into the point. And who are the saints? The saints of the Israelites, bro. Okay. Um. <clears throat> Let's get that scripture. This is Revelation 18 and 21. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down. What's that great city talking about? That's talking about America, which is Babylon the Great. Okay, modern day Babylon the Great, which is America, that the Bible speaks of, is about to be taken down by way of violence, man. And it's only going to take the Lord one hour to destroy uh, Babylon the Great. All right, it says, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. So that's what the Lord is coming back to do. He's going to come back with his fire, with his chariots like a whirlwind, to render his anger and his rebuke with flames of fire. For all you, you know, um, gods who love individuals out there, the Lord, you don't even understand what the Lord's coming back to do, man. All right.
so that's pretty much um i'm gonna i think i'm gonna leave it there but you know the point's been made man you know this this bloody city that that's been built up by esau man and the bloodshed is continuing, man. It's, it's, you know, we just, we're about to enter into the time of Jacob's trouble. It, there's about to be more bloodshed on the, upon the earth than there ever has been in history, man. The scriptures speak about Daniel 12 and 1, a time on the earth that's going to be like no other since there was a nation. That time is coming. That time is soon. The scriptures said the slain of the Lord shall be many, man. And not to mention before the Lord's return, you're going to have Jacob's trouble. You're going to have the time where, you know, uh, Esau pushes out uh, the mark, you know. You're going to have more uproars of the people, more, you know, division among the nations. One people standing up to fight against another. You're going to have Esau with his troops out there, with the drone strikes. All these things are going to be happening. There's going to be a lot more bloodshed in the time to come, man. And that's why we do what we do, because knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, do we persuade men, right? Anyways, man. I love being in nature, you know. I just love taking it in and... You know, just, I need to, you know, and I've been thinking about meditating a lot more, you know, reading a lot more, meditating a lot more. Inspired by, um, there was a video that Elder Yasha Wanba had did, and he said he was going for a walk, and he was just reading through the book of Sarat. And he did a beautiful video, man, just, and he was just sitting, you know, just doing a video. And I said to myself, you know what, I need to do that today. I just got off work, and I said, I need to go and get back into nature and find my balance more, you know, go for more walks, clear my head, and really meditate, and be occupied in the meditation of the things to come and the things that are written before time all right like the scripture says the things that are written before time are written for our learning right this is sirach 39 and 1 but he that giveth his mind to the law of the most high and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient and be occupied in prophecies so that's what we got to do we got to always be occupied in prophecy man all right like the scriptures speak about seeing that you walk circumspectly you know, we got to, you know, the word circumspect means to look around, all right, in a circle. We've got to know what's going on around us, man. L uh, know what's going on in the news, filter it through the scriptures. Everything that we do, we're supposed to be meditating on the Lord, meditating on this word. All right, because these prophecies are speaking, like the scripture says in Habakkuk, the second chapter, at the end it shall speak and not lie. We are at the end and the vision is speaking. And these visions are for an appointed time. The visions are the prophecies, man. And all these prophecies have an appointed time to pop off. And they're popping off right now like popcorn. Alright, so um, yeah man, I pray you were edified, nah, you know, shalom to all you are, Kim, you few sisters that are listening as well, learning and that, you know, just a little video, uh, like a mini walk and talk or a sit down and talk, you know, little open meditation, things on my mind, thoughts, you know, spoken aloud, you know, on the camera, hey man, hey, we've got to keep pushing this word, man, you know, and give all praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right, the heavenly father through his only begotten son's names, man. What is his name and what is his son's name if thou canst tell, right? We're going to need to call upon those names in these last days in order to be saved. Acts 4 and 12. All right? So that those are the holy names that we call upon, man. Yahweh wa Yahweh Shai, man. Okay? Yahweh wa Yahweh Shai. All praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Till the next time, I'm going to close out. Shalom.